This is a Chucky Beat production. I can have a muted this one. Where's the Starbucks sign? So this is my first YouTube channel. Really old, I joined, um, I think in 2008. It has a lot of stuff on it that's super embarrassing. It's like really awful videos. The last, the last upload was um, six years ago. Pretty irrelevant. I have a much more current YouTube channel. Stupid name I had though, I had Ricer Hater 9 and if, and if you don't know what a Ricer is, the quick, Google image search would tell you. You know, I was what? I was like 11. You can go in the, my past uploads to find some really embarrassing stuff. So here's how you steal the flame from Zabo. Understandable smooth shit that murderers move with. If you want to. But a couple of my friends started making vlogs. Uh, they made some pretty good vlogs. And so I thought, I don't know, I thought I wanted to get it on it. Maybe try it out, see if I could do it. So I thought, what better to do it on than my car? Um, if you know me, you know, you probably know I, I drive a Volvo, but a little bit of an older Volvo, and I love it. It's probably my favorite thing, favorite thing that I own. Today's gonna be about living with my Volvo wagon. Um, I bought it last summer. I've been driving it since then, so we're approaching this summer, so. I guess about a calendar year, almost, although about at the end of the summer. It's gonna be about living with it, things I love about it, things I hate about it, um, what it's like to own this car. Before I got this car, um, I this is my second car, it's only my second car. I've had another car that I've owned, but um, before both of those, I drove my mother as Clubman a lot. She had a 2010 Mini Clubman. I drove that around, um, and I really loved it. It was manual, I and mean, minis are minis are so fun to drive. Then I, for a while, was driving my father's Mazda 2. I drove that for a, for quite a while. Um, I had a delivery job for an Indian restaurant. Fucking idiot! Jesus Christ! Pittsburgh drivers! Oh my God! Drove it around for delivery. It was a lot of fun. I love how small it was. I really loved it a lot. Um, and I had some really great times. I taught my girlfriend how to drive on it, which was really fun. Uh, oh, well, it was close. And then um, I bought a 1991 Mitsubishi 3000 GT from my stepdad's grandfather. And so I bought it, 500 bucks. It needed it needed some work, uh, for sure, it needed some work. Serious muffler issues. It was really, really loud. And so the, the 3000 GT is a really cool car. I really love the car. But it came in the highest trim level, which is the VR4. Twin turbo, tons, a lot of horsepower. I don't, you know, I don't know the number, but it, it's a fast car. Um, active aero, front lip, and you know, spoiler, that activate when you reach a certain mile an hour. Four wheel steering. Okay, four wheel steering on this car. Active exhaust, you could change it from kind of quiet street to a louder race mode. My car, mine was the SL trim level, so it means it was the same car, just as heavy, with none of the power, none of the cool features. I did have an electronically controlled suspension, didn't work, never worked. The climate control unit blew up one one day on my way to work. You know, first car, I did a lot of tasteless stuff. I turned it into kind of a ricer, if I if I do admit that. Plastied up the wheels black. I bought a fart cannon ricer muffler, which was, I regret. But I had so much fun in that car, my first car. My best friend from back home and I, we, we, we took an auto crossing. The exhaust fell off, so I drove an hour and a half home with no muffler, which was, fucking crazy. In the end, um, you know, when I went to school, it, it ended up sitting for about a year. You know, I don't know, it, it needed more work than I could put into it. And I didn't have the money, you know? So, decided to sell it, and I ended up selling it to a 
kid who it was his, it was also his first car. I sold it for 800 bucks, so I made a little bit of money off it. I guess in the end I made my money back. So the summer after um, I sold that car, I determined that I wanted a new car. And so I started looking. I started looking at a lot of different cars. First I saw this old 80s um, Golf. I looked at this Subaru GL sedan. I also looked at a, seven, a 1977 Cadillac Seville, which I decided was... Thank you. You too. And then I, I found this 1989 Mitsubishi Galant for sale at a garage, and I fell in love with it. It was so cool looking. Figured I was gonna buy it. It was two thousand um, dollars, which was within my budget. And then I fi I figured I should bring it to uh, to have an inspection before I bought it. So last minute I bring it to a shop. It hasn't been driven for years. Um, whatever. There's a button. It needs a lot of work. Um, he said for two thousand dollars I'd never buy this car. Listen, you know, definitely don't buy it. And I was like. Fuck. The seller never returned any of my calls after that. That was kind of a bummer. What is going on with how this looks? Does it look okay? I'm using the FaceTime camera. Is that such a crime? Whoa! Yeah, so the guy flaked out. And so I was like really sad about that. I was sad because I was I was I was in love with that car. My friend and I are driving home from that inspection. And then we see this lonely little Volvo wagon uh, for sale. The summer before he bought a 78 Volvo. Uh, 242. It's so cool. You know, I loved the car. He fucking loved it. So we were like, oh, let's check this Volvo. And so long story short, I bought that car uh, the next day. That's 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 what we're in right now. My Volvo, nine, my 93 Volvo 940 wagon. And I, I love it. I love the car to death. It's just lovely every time. Absolutely lovely. Can I open the windows now, please, mom? <sighs> I figure I'll drive to like a some, some some nice looking spot right now. And got my camera in the car. I'll shoot the car. Some nice shots. That's the thing about using the FaceTime camera, I guess. Is even if because the quality <coughs> the quality looks pretty good to me. Maybe it's just I'm not really seeing it, but it looks pretty good to me. But I, I guess the thing about it is the audio quality is much poorer, right? Because they use the front facing microphone. Where is the front facing microphone? So I just went to completely the wrong place. Turning around now, we're going somewhere. We're going where I think it is. It's not some brand new car, and it's not a fancy car. I don't need to worry so much about, you know, little dings and scrapes, because it already has them. It's got a lot of things that I wouldn't expect a car of this age to have. It has heated mirrors, uh, heated seats, AC, of course, um, sunroof. That's about it. What I like about it is the community that comes with owning a Volvo. I'm part of a Facebook group that's really active and great. If you, need, if you have any questions or you need anything, it's so easy to just to post there and everyone's super friendly and helpful. So it's just really fun to be a Volvo owner. That's the other thing about this car. There are so many unique, really unique little interactions and things. The door handles are one of my favorite things. So what you do to open it is you take this, Let's see if I can get you shown here, you pull it straight back. Another thing I love about it is how much space it has. I have never once run out of space in this car. There's just so much of it. You can see I have a ton of shit back there. I have two sets of hubcaps, like boots, all my camera gear. But look, you can fold the seats down. Look how much space is back here. I've got, I've got, I've got like, I could fit like fucking a lot of stuff back here, all right? The car came with an IPD rear anti-sway bar. 
or I think it might be the rear chassis brace, I'm not sure, but it came with it um, when I got it. You can see it right there. The fact that I have these really big rubber bumpers on the front and the back, right? they're plastic, but when I'm in like a parking garage, for example, or I'm in a place where the ends of my spot aren't cars, there's something else like barriers, I can use the bumpers to nudge and feel it out. I can, I can do that stuff and not feel bad about it. Um, and I really do love that uh, about the car. thing that happens when I open the hood, definitely something I hate. Another thing I hate is how, but I think to people who don't know Volvos very well or who are really interested in them, and I get that, it's a boring, totally boring, like, beater car. Yeah, you know, a lot of cars I could have bought where everybody who sees it would be like, damn, uh, you know, that is something I hate. Maybe not hate, that's something I dislike. You know, I don't really, I didn't buy it for, I could have bought a flashy car if I cared about what other people thought. I bought it because I love it. Oh yeah, so, I hate how there's a Freon leak, so I have to get that charged every um, spring. Like right now, there's no AC and it's really hot in the car right now. I don't like, I don't like how big it is, especially in Pittsburgh where I have to parallel park all the time it sticks out a lot farther than you think. That's annoying, because I have to find big spaces. The way people look at you when you're filming yourself is like, it's like, I hate it. I hate it. So that's, I guess, kind of what it's like living with a Volvo wagon. It's also just, you know, I wanted to see if I could make this kind of vlog thing. And if whoever's watching it, whoever, ends up seeing this somehow. Tell me how you, how you like it. Yeah. But thanks for watching. If you're ever in a position where you're thinking about buying a Volvo wagon, do it. I promise you will never regret it. Thanks again. And uh, maybe I'll see you next time.